Ladies and gentlemen, there was a lot of new music released in September. So much that quite frankly, even if I had uploaded every single day, there's no way we would cover all of this fucking music. And guess what? Minor spoiler alert. October is even fucking busier. With all this in mind, let's not waste any fucking time and let's talk about a bunch of music I missed in September 2021. Because once again, holy shit, there was a lot. First up, we have Vile Genesis from In Fury, an album I completely forgot about, if we're being entirely honest here, but that's not really a bad thing, because I don't really feel like I missed a lot here. Which isn't to say the record's bad, because I don't really think it is. I think it's actually a pretty tight and well-produced piece of modern tech death. But there just isn't a lot to talk about, you know? If you've heard In Fury before, if you've heard any modern tech death before, for that matter, then you already kind of know what to expect from this album. It's a lot of over-the-top guitar work and percussion, a lot of blast beats, a lot of incomprehensible vocals, a very sci-fi, horror, spacey, cosmic aesthetic. It's tight, it's fast, cohesive, it's brutal, it doesn't waste any fucking time. It's in theory. Honestly, what more information could you possibly fucking need? If you liked in theory before, you'll probably like this record. If you didn't, well, you won't. I guess. That's it, really. Next up, we have, um, how the fuck do I pronounce this? Prenuntius Infinity from Vulvodynia. I think that's correct. I honestly don't fucking know. Hailing from South Africa, these guys have become pretty well known for a pretty gnarly and tongue-in-cheek and self-aware fusion of slam, deathcore, brutal death metal, and technical death metal. It is overwhelmingly brutal at times, but it's still very slick and very modern. Volvodynia clearly have their ear to the ground and are paying attention to how other modern bands are producing their records and engineering their records and presenting their records. And I admire that, honestly. And I also admire how loosey-goosey the band plays it, you know? They're not really concerned with being the toughest, most brutal motherfuckers in the world, unlike most death metal bands. They just want to have fun, and they're aware that this genre can be kind of fucking stupid at times, and they're comfortable bringing in a lot of guest stars, uh, like Ollie from Arkspire, or Jod James from Disentomb, or Malcolm Pugh from the aforementioned In Fury, as well as a few former members of... I Declare War and, and Pathology, you know, there's real death metal brotherhood going on here. It's like a, a giant, modern, brutal death metal tech death barbecue, and everyone's invited, and that's fun. But the music with time just grows to be a little stale, a little derivative. Um, it lacks a lot of personality and originality, in my opinion. It's fun, it's heavy, and it can be genuinely entertaining in small bursts. But it's not a record I'm probably going to return to, and I doubt other death metal fans would feel the same way unless they are already super into everything that Volvodynia is doing. I guess the simple way of putting it is it's extremely well made, but ultimately not for me. I think I'm just looking for something a little funkier and with a little more substance from my death metal and from my extreme music. That's all. Next up we have Exile from the Raven Age. And I care so little about this album, and I care so little about this band, that I actually stopped recording so I could go get a bite to eat. There's just really nothing to talk about. It's generic, it's lame, it's forgettable, it's a soulless derivative rock record with some pretty lame fucking riffs and some pretty lame fucking choruses. The only reason anyone, and I mean anyone, gives a shit about this band, the only reason anyone even knows about this band is because of Iron Maiden, because Iron Maiden have brought them out on a bunch of tours, and because George Harris, this band's guitarist, happens to be the son of Steve Harris, the bassist for Iron Maiden. That is the only reason anyone knows or gives a fuck about this goddamn band, and anyone saying otherwise is a liar. Off the top of my head, I don't remember anything from this album, and I doubt I'll remember that it exists, once this album is online, because that's how fucking boring and forgettable and generic it is. So let's just move the fuck on. 
Next up, we have the Turbo Covers EP from The Lion's Daughter, an American black and sludge metal band who earlier this year released an amazing record called Skin Show. It's one of my favorite albums of the year. As such, I was pretty excited for this new EP, and I was not disappointed in the slightest by a single moment of this. This is, in my opinion, not just another stellar piece of music from The Lion's Daughter, but it's maybe the best cover EP or album or anything that I've heard in a while. Like, finally, we have a band that's really talented and really unique and understands that you can't just literally do karaoke, that you can't literally just play the fucking original song note for note and add a fucking heavier riff. Finally, a band that understands that it's better and smarter and more fun to actually transform the fucking songs, which is exactly what the Lion's Daughter do, and that's what makes this EP so fucking cool. For instance, the band's cover of Turbo Lover, originally from Judas Priest, is fucking fantastic. It's so weird, so dark, so creepy, genuinely kind of sexy. There are some really dark, mysterious, erotic keyboards with some pummeling percussion. It really does kind of recapture the energy of that original Judas Priest cut while transforming it into something far more sinister and sexual at the same time. I'm also really loving the covers of Burning Inside and Everyone I Went to High School With Is Dead, originally from Ministry and Mr. Bungle, respectively. This is where you see Lion's Daughter just kind of letting their freak flag fly, just going nuts with industrial riffs and keyboards and blackened sludgy nonsense. And the Negative Creep cover, originally from Nirvana, is disturbingly heavy. They go full-blown sludge metal on this, and I love it. This whole EP from start to finish is a fucking banger, another stellar release from Lion's Daughter, the best cover album EP project of the year, the best EP of the year. Holy shit, these guys can truly do no fucking wrong at this point. Definitely check this out. Next up, we have another EP, this time from Insomnium, entitled Argent Moon, and it's... it's okay. Um, it's very predictable by the standards of Insomnium. They've more or less been making the same type of album over and over again these past couple of years. But you know what? It's really well performed, it's really well produced, it's very pretty and evocative, and there are a lot of lush guitar tones and guitar solos, and it can still be kind of fierce, you know? It's still got a little bit of a backbone to it. I think Insomnium fans will be more than fucking ecstatic with this. I mean, I personally got pretty bored of this pretty quickly, but I'm going to chalk it up to a matter of personal taste, because there's really nothing objectively bad or even all that unappealing about this. It's it's a perfectly fine EP if you like Insomnium. If not, I would say skip it. Next up, we have Avsalvir from Signs of the Swarm. They're a relatively young, kind of modern deathcore band with some brutal death metal influences. They have been plagued by allegations and PR and social media crises on a consistent fucking basis. But despite that, they're not able to transform or weaponize any of that drama into anything all that interesting or powerful. In fact, this is a remarkably boring and generic album, in my opinion. I mean, it's not like incompetent or anything. It's overall a very well-performed and produced record. There's just nothing about the songwriting that's especially memorable or engaging. It, it just kind of goes by, you know? It reminds me a lot of that Slaughter to Prevail record. It's just kind of an endless blur of ham-fisted breakdowns and edgy bullshit. I don't know, um, I guess this'll probably be fine for some people. I really don't care, and if it wasn't for some of the controversy and the fact that this band has become somewhat notorious, I doubt I would have paid much attention to these guys at all, so... C'est la vie, whatever. Do with that information whatever the fuck you wish. Next up, we have At One With None from Portrait, an American old-school heavy metal band. Unfortunately, this was somewhat overshadowed by Iron Maiden's Senjutsu, which, unfortunately, Portrait very foolishly released the exact same weekend. It's a shame, because honestly, looking at the two records objectively, I think I prefer this. It's a very epic and somber record with some thunderous and declarative riffs. Uh, it kind of reminds me to a certain extent of what we've been hearing from Spirit Adrift as of late, maybe excluding the last EP. 
Um, and it also kind of reminds me of like a fusion of like some 80s metal from King Diamond, Merciful Fate, Iced Earth, a little bit of the aforementioned Iron Maiden too, especially in regards to some of the, the galloping guitars and the overall uh, size and scale of this record. Some of these songs are a bit too long for their own good, and I can't help but get the feeling that you know, everything Portrait's doing, while interesting, has just been done better by the aforementioned Spirit Adrift, and perhaps uh, even by Witherfall, who very similarly borrow a lot of influence from King Diamond and Ice Earth. Uh, but nonetheless, I think this album has some pretty solid jams for anyone looking for some dark, old-school heavy metal with a more epic twist and flair, and perhaps were disappointed with Senjutsu. I guess if I were to have reviewed it, it would get like a pretty enthusiastic three to five. I think it's a pretty, I think it's pretty solid. It's got some warts, but warts and all, I think it's pretty fun. So yeah, check it out. Next up, we have the Seeds of Seduction EP from Necrosexual. This is just grimy, nasty, in your face, speed metal and heavy metal fury. It's dark and twisted and horny as fuck. Very self-aware very tongue-in-cheek, like, it's just fucking fun, a big, dumb, sleazy blast of anthemic heavy metal riffery and mayhem, it doesn't waste any time whatsoever, it's not pretentious at all, it's kind of like a hotter, nastier take on, like, guar to a certain extent, but I'm also reminded of, like, some classic heavy metal and speed metal with some first-wave black metal influences, uh, I, I love the energy that's consistently emanating out of this record. And Necrosexual himself is just a really cool figure. He was kind enough to send me an early copy of this EP, hoping I'd review it uh, in a full album review. And to be honest, I had intended to do so, but then I found out about a new Carnifex album. And sorry, Necrosexual, but guess what? One of those was going to get more views than the other. Regardless, I'm happy I can talk about it here because this is just a really, 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 really fucking fun listen. Next up, we have Chaos Vector from Summoner's Circle. And I wish I had done a full album review for this because there's just so much to talk about. It is a very theatrical and over-the-top and flamboyant record with a lot of string instruments, a lot of guitar harmonies and melodies, a lot of very over-the-top dramatic soundscapes and choruses, very acidic vocals. It kind of feels like a, a modern metal's answer to a band like Cradle of Filth, with some more like melodic death metal influences and, and some more prominent black and death metal influences as well. I feel like a lot of these different elements and ideas could be blended a little bit better. It can be a little chaotic and overwhelming at times, but you know... For a young underground band, I'm kind of impressed with how well so much of this does work. And it does make me pretty excited to see what these guys could do on another studio album with a bigger budget, with more resources, and with a little bit more experience uh, behind them. Next up, we have I Have Seen the Light and It Was Repulsive from Sermon of Flames, an absolutely abhorrently disgusting kind of black and sludge metal record. It is chaotic and intense and extremely continuously, almost annoyingly brutal. It can be genuinely jarring at times. I feel like the band definitely need to step back a little bit. I feel like the songwriting itself is also pretty inconsistent, but when the stars align at certain points on this album, damn, it is interesting. Damn, it is exciting. Damn, it is immersing. It really does feel as if you are falling down a portal into fucking hell. I just kind of wish, you know, there was maybe a mattress at the bottom of that hole to make my landing a little bit more soft, I guess. But hey, some people don't want that mattress. Some people want to fall flat on their fucking face and get hurt. And those people are going to have a blast with this because this is uncompromising, unrelentless. It's sharp. It's toxic. It's Every nasty word I could use to describe an album, it, it just it, it just completely fucks with you in every single way. Next up, we have Feast at the Forbidden Tree from Black Mass, a very chaotic and primitive and violent slice of thrash metal, very obviously influenced by very early creator, and I would say maybe just a little bit of Megadeth as well, especially with some of the really frantic guitar work. 
it's very over the top, a little meat and potatoes in some parts, but super sharp, super epic, super nasty, and I think at the end of the day, that's what most people really want from thrash metal, so I've no major complaints. And I guess sonically and spiritually speaking, this is probably the most authentic kind of old school kind of thrash metal record we've heard this year, aside from maybe dealing death from Vulture. So if you're super nostalgic for the glory days of thrash when everything was super underground and super extreme and bare bones and evil, then you are bound to get a fucking kick and a half out of this. Definitely check this out. Next up, we have Psychedelic Realms of Hell from Warflulch, which immediately wins the award for coolest album cover of the year, because holy shit, just fucking look at that. There is so much color, so much detail. It is a genuinely beautiful, psychedelic display of what the fuckery, and I love it. Which, I guess, come to think of it, is exactly how I would describe this album. It's very weird, very strange, very trippy, and very raw and primitive and nasty as well. I mean, it's just this really chaotic and spicy and, and kind of ugly combination of like psychedelia and underground death metal. It's a very gnarly and, and toxic record. Like it's constantly spewing literal acid and also like dangerous acid like you'll get high and you'll also fucking burn yourself very easily and very quickly we've seen a lot of death metal bands try to bring some psychedelic flavors into the genre in the past couple of years blood incantation perhaps being one of the most prominent and successful examples but i don't know if anyone has gone to the lengths that warflulch has this is just such a, a weird chaotic little thing like i i kind of love it not gonna lie to you next up we have malignant reality from replicant i've heard a lot about this album in the last couple of weeks and i gotta be honest i'm maybe just a little bit let down there are some pretty twisted riffs on here um some pretty wild arrangements but not too wild to the point where i'm really blown away in fact by the standards of technical death metal and avant-garde death metal there's really nothing on here that I haven't heard before. On top of that, the production is a little sterile and flat and soulless for my liking. I don't know. I, I just feel like it would benefit from either being a lot more raw and grainy and lo-fi or from being like a lot better polished and produced. And instead, it just feels kind of flat. I don't know. Like it just has no impact. It's still pretty tight. It's still pretty brutal. But it could have been way tighter and way more brutal. It really is that simple for me, at least. Still, if you're looking for some obtuse, in-your-face, experimental death metal carnage, I suppose you can't do wrong with this. It'll, it'll satisfy you for a wee bit, at least. Next up, we have Undo the Chains from Rafe. This is 32 minutes of straight-to-the-fucking-point blackened thrash and speed metal insanity, very much in line with Midnight and Bewitcher. Uh, a lot of bold guitar melodies, a lot of very dynamic and acidic vocals. Uh, the riffs are pretty strong. It's not an especially original record, but you know what? It, it's, it's greasy, it's simple, and it's fun. Within 32 minutes, it delivers all the high-octane, heavy metal thrills you could possibly want from an album of this style. It doesn't waste your time, it's not pretentious, it fucks off when it's done. You know, it might not stick with you the way that other records from the aforementioned Midnight and Bewitcher have, but it'll be fun while it's on, and that's good enough for me. And finally, this brings us to Metal's Back, the debut album from Dungeon Wolf. And I've kind of sped through all these other albums because I actually want to spend a decent amount of time talking about this, because it is without question... Not just the worst heavy metal album I've heard this year, but one of the worst heavy metal albums I've heard ever. This is utterly, completely incompetent in every single way. The production, the music, the lyrics, the presentation, the design, even the album artwork. The album artwork is one of the stupidest, cringiest pieces of, like, bullshit i've ever seen it looks like it should be the cover to like some creepy fan fiction or like some internet porn game it doesn't even look real 
And the band itself doesn't seem real either. Like, I came to know them through their YouTube channel, which is where their singer and guitarist just kind of posts all of these bizarre and cheaply produced rants about Cardi B and the state of black metal, and it's really fucking cringe. It's just pure boomer metal nonsense. It's like all the rantings of Brian Poston's grandpa metal, but brought to life in human form. And I bring all this up because it's actually very important in understanding how this album works and why it does what it does the way that it does. This album functions as if it thinks it is single-handedly saving metal from Cardi B, from hipster bands, from metalcore and gent and autotune and all this other garbage. In reality, this is an embarrassing display of a group of Middle-aged boomers clearly going through a midlife fucking crisis. They can't seem to accept the fact that the genre has changed and they feel the need to make this. They feel the need to save metal, to bring it back. And in reality, all they're doing is making it look utterly fucking embarrassing and humiliating. Like, this is a pathetic display here. The most generic riffs, the most generic lyrics, the most chaotic and underdeveloped guitar solos and structures. It's very sloppily put together. Like we're talking middle school band quality at times or like a really shitty local karaoke group. Um, it, it's production wise, I think trying to emulate a lot of early recordings out of the Nawaba movement and especially from bands like Syrup Ungle and Manila Road. But instead, it just feels like a really, really, really bad demo that, like, I found, like, on the bottom of my dad's garage floor that he, for whatever reason, never threw out. It's just fucking bad, man. I, I cannot believe an album this terrible actually exists. And that's it. I think. Maybe. I don't really know. Like I said, there's a lot of music that came out in September to the point where I'm certain that there's something else that I missed. But, because there's even more stuff coming out in October, I'm gonna have to move on, and therefore this is the end of this video. What other albums did I miss? You feel free to let me know, tell me what I should be on the lookout for, specifically in October. Not even joking, some little tips and hints would help, because there's so much, there's so much new music to navigate. Press this button right here to get updates on the Metal Meltdown fuck immediately to, just to subscribe to the channel if you somehow haven't already. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.